Hi, I'm Brian. This is Francis. He's actually my, my lead coach here at Thrive Fit. We're in Toronto, Canada. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so we're starting to scale our business and we have a bunch of young coaches who are coming on board and yeah. we finally got some onboarding going, um, but yeah. we're trying to understand what that first year looks like and like how long should onboarding, onboarding be? Should we structure their learning for the first year? We want to get some information on how to handle young coaches coming in uh, yeah. because uh, we've tried a few different methods. Some have worked, some haven't, and we're trying to get a bit more consistent. Yeah. So great question. And I'll give you... I'll kind of give you a rundown of like what our internship looks like, right? Because this is four months. Um, the first two weeks is literally client interactions only, right? Like I don't want you coaching a client. I don't want you doing anything other than setting up and tearing down equipment, um, trying to get everybody's first name down, getting personal information and obviously, you know, to an appropriate amount, right? But like, hey man, you know, tell me about you. What's your job like? Do you have kids? Tell me about what do you do in your free time? What do you enjoy? So like trying to build that relationship and build that rapport. That's the first two weeks. And then it's, it's literally like graded exposure, right? What, sorry. Well, I was just going to say, so that's their time on the floor. Now, is there anything going on on the back end? Oh, those yeah. First two weeks? yeah. So um, shameless product plug, but like physical prep 101, like the, the product that I created, we try and get them to watch that. In a perfect world, they watch it before they start. But if nothing else, they're going through like a module a day, right? right. So about an hour a day. And then what we're going to do is um, we're going to also be teaching that live. So like, let's say your goal is to watch the whole video on squatting on Monday, right? Or whatever day it is. Like two days later, what we're going to do, we're going to go in the gym. You're going to teach it back to me, okay? So this is a totally different context versus if it's just me spewing information to them, then yeah, they'll take some in and they may not. But the whole dynamic is different when they're taking notes on something, yeah. writing it down. Now they have to put it in their words. They got to teach it back to me. So they got to be able to explain what's important to them or what's pertinent to them. And then the last piece of that puzzle is they've got to actually coach one of our coaches through the progression. Okay. okay? So, you know, depending on how you do things, like we have an entire squat progression, right? Like yeah. if we just taught the back squat, maybe that's all we would do, but I wanna give them like five exercises that they can start with, right? Like plate squat, goblet squat, two kettlebell front squat, front squat, back squat. So like, let's say those are the five. All yeah. right, now you gotta coach one of us through each one. Through all five of them. Absolutely, so now they're starting to understand, okay, well, why is that progression the way that it is? What are the unifying themes in a squat? What are the things that differentiate each variation and the things you need to focus on there? So that is, that's like the first two weeks is just the client interactions. And then generally in your guys' case, if you're onboarding people, it'll probably be a little bit faster, but I would say you probably wanna go through one or two of those per week, right? It just depends on how fast you want them to get up to speed. Um, again, in the internship program, it's like one a week, right? So, hey, we're going to talk about breathing and core training on week one. So you're going to watch the video. You're going to teach it to us. Then we're going to go on the floor and we're going to coach it. Okay. So, and we literally, like, that could be your first 12 reads, right? Yeah. So you think breathing and core training. Um, Jay does a really good talk on just, like, coaching and cueing yeah. that he gives the first week that's, you know, external versus internal cues, feeling muscles versus focusing on outcomes. Then we go breathing and core training, squatting, hinging, split stance, single leg. We get into uh, horizontal pushing and pulling, vertical pushing and pulling. And then we can get into some of the bigger topics, right? So like program design, that's two weeks. Um, conditioning is another week. And then a lot of times what we like to do as well. Now keep in mind, this whole time they've been teaching back to us. Mm -hmm. Right. And that kills two birds with one stone. Number one, it makes sure that they actually know what they're talking about. Yeah. Right. But number two, it starts to get them confident in their communication skills because you guys know as well as I do, you could have like, like the most technically yeah. sophisticated <laughs> coach, but you have to be able to communicate it to another human being. <clears throat> so they're constantly getting practice and they're constantly getting reps in that environment. And then towards the end, we'll start like, okay, we phase them into coaching more. And so maybe it's just, okay, you're going to take 
Betty through her warm up, right? And then once they look really good in the breathing and the warm ups and the core stuff, okay, that's a little bit more simplistic. Now, maybe two to four weeks in, now we're going to start letting you take, because we do semi private training here, yeah. we're going to let you take one person through their workout. We're still going to supervise you, but basically, instead of one on four with one coach, you're going to take this one client. We're going to take the other three. We'll still keep an eye on you, but you're going to be just like one on one with this person. What kind of uh, what kind of model do you guys do there? Is it one on one group? So we're one to three. Okay. So I love that format, but we also know that if you've ever done one on one, the hardest part is being able to carry a conversation for a full hour, right? <laughs> so I like, I like putting them in that environment, right? Like, hey. Dude, a minute never feels longer than when you have nothing to talk about with somebody. Yeah. So I've done that. Like I did in home for three years. I did rehab for three years before that. And so I know what it's like to be in that environment in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And you have to try and find points of connection, yeah. right? That go beyond just what you're doing in the gym. Like, that's great. You know, how did you feel? Okay. Okay. Well, now I still got 58 seconds to talk to you about stuff. <laughs> so it's the interpersonal skills so that's kind of how we layer it in and then we just progressively give them more and more responsibility in that context right so okay you did one-on-one -on -one. okay now can you handle two people at the same time yeah. right so now it's not just the interaction it's how can you start to manage a session right because you know hey this person's doing one thing this person's doing another and in a perfect world, one is working while one is resting, but it doesn't always work like that. So that's how we kind of layer and phase it in. And then we just, like Ruth and I were talking about when you guys popped on, it's like just progressively putting them in different situations and making them comfortable, right? So it's one-on-one, -on -one. it's small group. If you do any large group, if somebody's real quiet and shy, perfect. I'm gonna go make you run our boot camp tonight. <laughs> and you're gonna have to project, and I'm gonna crank the music up, and where you're going to have to project over the music and people sweating and grunting and talking and, you know, we'll see what you can do, you know, and one of the things I wouldn't do this day one, but maybe like a couple months in, if you do have that person, a couple things that we'll do to try and get people more comfortable is we will like our gym is like 90 feet long. So like 30, 35 meters, we'll make them stand on one end of the gym and the client will be on the opposite end. And you have to coach them from one end of the gym to the other, <laughs> okay? Awesome. So now you've got to project, right? You've right. got to project. Um, another thing that we'll do, and we've done this in like staff trainings, is literally they'll be coaching and they'll kind of be quiet and I'll literally go over and I'll turn the music up as loud as I can. <laughs> and just, I'm just messing with them like, hey, this may be a situation. The gym's busy. It's loud. Can you project? Can you get your point across? So it's just constantly, after you've got like the base foundation, then it becomes way more individualized. Right. And it's like, okay, what does this person need? And sometimes they need more interpersonal skills. Sometimes they need to learn to be a little bit more confident, a little bit more uh, boombastic, if you will. And just like, hey, project your voice, put yourself out there. Um, some people just need more X's and O's type training, you know? Yeah. So that would be kind of our model. And then I don't know if you guys asked this as well, but like, how do you continue to evolve and grow that? Um, what we do now, because again, everybody, we're in a unique situation because pretty much everybody that works here is interned for us. So we know not only that they've got the technical skills, but from a team perspective, that the chemistry is going to be right. Right. I don't know how big your guys' staff is right now, but there's nothing worse than bringing the wrong person into your team. Yeah. yeah. It's like a cancer that metastasizes, right? It just gets bigger and it affects and impacts everybody. So now what our, our staff training looks like is like once a week, we'll generally meet for an hour. Now this is outside of <clears throat> Bill doesn't have a patient and we're hanging out in his room talking about whatever. Right. But we do this one hour a week and there's times when it is directed. So like right now we're kind of revamping our assessment process and that's like collaboratively as a group, what are our big things? What are we going to focus on? 
And then a lot of times what I find myself doing is just probing, right? Like asking questions. Okay, well, why did you say that? Why did you say this? And trying to bring us all under the same umbrella because we all have different experiences, right? And we all work with different client populations. So trying to keep everybody, it's a big umbrella, but trying to keep everybody underneath it, right? right. Without cramping them. I want them to have their own personality, their own flair, but we all have to think to some degree in the same way. Yeah. So that's kind of where we're at now with regards to trying to, you know, continue to educate. And it's just depth, right? It's like, okay, all the stuff, like once you're comfortable with teaching the exercises and interacting and writing a good program, now it's like just getting more into the, the weeds with stuff. And okay, why do you choose a half kneeling chop away from the up knee versus into the up knee? Yeah. You know, stuff like that, so.